Pierluigi Collina, the most famous of all referees. You surely know him even if you missed those times, the times when this bold man with an expressive face was boasting the toughest footballers. On December 16, France football named Pierluigi the best referee ever. And that is why you should know what made him so unique and what helped him get recognition. Before we begin, try to answer this question. How many minutes did Colina add to the legendary Champions League final in 1999, when Man United made the historical comeback against Bayern? 3, 4, 5 or 6? Number 1. Physique it may sound obvious that referees must be very fit, but it wasn't always like this. Back in the days, many of them couldn't keep up with the pace of a game and would often be out of breath by the end of a match. But it was not the case for Colina. He was always in great shape, without a sign of extra weight. Pierluigi did care about his fitness. He followed a diet and did a lot of working out. When he retired and was appointed as UEFA's chief refereeing officer, he launched a program on referee's physical training. It has a lot to do with running, because all the referee does is run. He has to keep running for 90 minutes, that's why a good physical shape is a must. If you're not fit enough, you can't referee, the game is too intense nowadays. The difference between a player's and a referee's shape is getting smaller and that's what we're aiming for. It was football to help Colina get in shape. Pierluigi was born in a working-class family from the north of Italy. His parents were working long hours, while a future referee was studying in a Christian school and was a part of the football team. Not the most important part, as he would often stay on the bench. However, he played as a libero for Pallavinci, the amateur club, for two years. At the age of 17, Colina realized that he was not made for professional football. Luckily for him, a friend of his offered him to sign up for a refereeing course together, and that was Pierluigi's way into football. The physique and some skills he had turned out to be a great advantage. When you're 17, you don't do something for a reason, you do it for the sake of a new experience. I didn't think it would get this far when I started taking the course, but as a result, 13 years later, I refereed my first Serie A game. Number 2. Match Preparations It may seem that the only thing a referee needs is to know all the rules. Colina's knowledge was perfect, but what made him special is the way he approached every single match. Pierre Luigi worked as a financial advisor for some time, so he was pretty used to analyzing and predicting things. Not only he thoroughly analyzed squads and tactics, but players as well. Their favorite moves, the way they preferred to attack and their characters. That's why a game of football was an open book for Colina. He always was at the right place at the right time, able to follow all the events. It is essential for the referee to know which formations the teams use, how they play, how the players move. Are they shaped as 4-4-2 or 3-4-3 or maybe 3-4-1-2? How often do they use the offside trap and how they use it? Do they press high and so on? It's also good to know if the team plays with one forward or two. On this, depends which zones will be used more. Colina knew every single player by name, even from smaller clubs. It helped him read the game and interpret episodes correctly. For example, I know that Mihailovic likes to pass the ball long with his left, so I can predict where he will pass it. I pay attention to that zone and move there. If there's a technical player, like Del Piero, he would rather cut inside and shoot than cross. So I should keep an eye on the penalty spot. And here's what Graham Paul, the ex-referee who worked with Colina at the World Cup game in 2002 said. He wrote the names of both teams in their correct formations. Then he went on to explain what would happen if Japan went a goal up or if Turkey took the lead. He explained how the losing side would change their tactics or formation or whether they would make a substitution. He detailed how the other team would probably respond, then he indicated who might get involved in incidents behind his back. Number 3. Treating players with respect One of the most viral videos featuring Colina is about him lashing out at Tomasz Repka, the Czech captain, during the Euro 2000 match. But there was a rare exception, as Pierluigi said he didn't recognize himself on that video. Colina's appearance added to his image. His expressive light eyes and distinctive facial expressions made Pierluigi look totally overwhelming. Even the most brutal players like Roy Keane found it hard to argue with him. 
but his biggest strength was diplomacy. He knew all the rules by heart and was very convincing while explaining his decisions to players. What is more, Colina speaks Italian, French, Spanish and English. That helped him communicate with players efficiently. There was a good example at the Inter-Juventus game in 1997. The atmosphere was heated, the Inter players and fans went mad on the referees as their goal was cancelled due to offside. Colina had doubts about that offside, but he was quick to protect the linesman. Pierre Luigi consulted with the linesman and confirmed the offside. Then he called Bergomi, the Inter captain, and told him, Giuseppe, you have to trust me, he was offside. And after that, he ran to the Inter coach Roy Hodgson and explained his decision to him. And then they shaked hands. Those who watched that very final in 1999 can remember Colina consoling the Bayern players. No matter how strict a referee he was, he was a human after all. Yet another important thing about him. However, Colina didn't like being in the spotlight. In 2002, he was refereeing the World Cup final, Germany vs Brazil. He showed two yellow cards at the very beginning of the game, but he noticed things getting heated. He decided to be more diplomatic. No more cards were shown and the match ended up being a good example of fair play and sportsmanship. This is how Colina speaks about his own rules. You need to earn the respect of everyone involved. Not because you're the referee, but because they trust you. You have to realize what kind of pressure footballers are under. I understood that and players understood me. Number 4. Appearance The most notable thing about Colina At the age of 24, Pierre Luigi, already a Serie C referee, was struck by a misfortune. All his hair disappeared in three weeks. He was diagnosed with alopecia. The doctors were unable to find the reason. By the way, another referee, Sergei Karasov from Russia, had the same problem. As Colina admitted, he was lucky to face that when he was an adult. What is more, his close friend also lost his hair because of chemotherapy, so they faced it together. As for now, Pierre Luigi is pretty comfortable with making jokes about his appearance. There's one big flow in being bald. Should you make a mistake, everyone sees it's you and remembers you. But there's an upside as well. You can save on shampoo. Colina's bald head also helped him form a memorable image. The image made him popular worldwide as he appeared in a number of commercials. After the World Cup 2002, he became the face of a Japanese frozen food line, released an autobiography and appeared on the cover of Pro Evolution Soccer. Ironically, it was an advertisement contract to end his referee career. It was the year 2005. Pierre Luigi was 45 years old. Due to his age, he couldn't be a Serie A referee anymore. However, the Football Federation made an exception for him and allowed him to work for one extra year. And though, Pierre Luigi had to retire. The reason was the advertisement contract he signed with Opel, the title sponsor for Milan. It looked like a conflict of interest to the other Serie A clubs and their fans, so Colina had to sign his resignation. Later, he called that Opel contract a mistake, even though it brought him an unprecedented sum of 800,000 euros, while his salary was 125,000 per year. And once again, it was his appearance to bring him such fame. Number 5. Fairness and Incorruptibility But of course, it was his honest work that made him a top referee. In the 90s, there were numerous analytical TV shows about football. They were paying close attention to refereeing as well. There were hardly any flaws found in Colina and his assistant's work. He was a prime example of a referee. Strict, but fair. Pierre Luigi compared his job to one of a surgeon. No margin for error, immense pressure and tension. But once the final whistle goes, you realize that you've done your job well and that makes it worth it. A good example of Colina's qualities was Giuseppe Morata's phone call. The Juventus president said that Colina and Alberto Rossetti were too honest. No way you could bribe them. That happened during the Calcio Poli scandal, which got Juve demoted to Serie B and their two titles taken away. At that time, Morata didn't know he was under surveillance and was telling it like it was. Once it became public, it increased Colina's standing even more. As he said, I am a man of rules. My strict upbringing has made me this way, I think. And one final story that tells a lot about Colina. He was in love with football. It was his biggest passion. 
and he did care about the trappings of the game, just like footballer. The story took place at the World Cup final in 2002. The match was about to end in a few seconds. It was all over and I was thinking, how do I get myself the ball after I give the final whistle? I came to the Brazilian player, who had the ball and asked for it from him in Spanish, as I don't speak Portuguese. Maybe he was too wound up so he didn't understand me. But then a German player fought, so I got the ball, took it and then I gave the whistle. I was holding in my hands after the game during the awards ceremony. I was too afraid to lose it. 